The Grand Theft Auto games are notorious for their cryptic secrets, urban legends, myths, rumors, and just plain old hoaxes. These games are just filled with hidden mysteries, some intended by the creators, Rockstar Games themselves, and some created by the community. And if you don't already know, I'm a huge fan of these games and the myths present throughout, which is why I covered them extensively with the mainline GTA titles as well as even Red Dead Redemption, so make sure to check those out after this. But one myth, one mystery, one cryptic easter egg has truly stood above all the rest. Something so hidden, so secret, it wouldn't be solved for years. More mysterious than the woods of Bako Beyond and Bigfoot, and more strange than the mythical serial killers of Liberty City, more uncanny than the mysteries of Mothman and Mr. Trenchcoat. Today, we're looking at the biggest myth of all, the Mount Chiliad Mystery, GTA's deepest rabbit hole. But you know what isn't a gaming rabbit hole? Raid Shadow Legends. Just, you know, one of the best mobile games on the market. Are you looking for intense PvE and PvP content, tactical upgrade systems, and who could forget the awesome champions? Well, let me tell you why Raid Shadow Legends has all of this and more and is just a must-play game. Wait, who are you? Professor Death Knight here from Teleria University, who legally not a school, with a math problem. If you create a hit mobile game in 2019, how many champions will you have now? Over 700! Not only does Raid have hundreds of rad champions, it also has 15 amazing factions. Faction Pop Quiz, can you name the latest faction? If you said the elusive Sylvan Watchers, you're right! Okay class, any questions? Besides Ultimate Death Knight, who's your favorite champion? Alright, if, if I can't say Ultimate Death Knight, then I gotta say... Ultimate Death Knight. He's my number one boy. I'm not supposed to have favorites, but uh, I do. What do you think about the other champions? Oh, they all look super tough. I should try and get some of them to be a guest speaker in my class. Ooh. That's it for today, class. Your homework is to download Raid. Just kidding, I know you've already done that, so no homework. Except there will be a test of Valor. So study up. But you can use your phones, because it's a mobile game. All right, class dismissed. And if you're looking for something a little more challenging, Raid's got you covered with the new boss, Akumori the Phantom Shogun, who guards what you need to access the new Accessory Ascension feature, which allows you to upgrade your gear to even further heights. Oh, and also if you haven't seen it already, make sure to check out the animated limited series available for free on the Raid Shadow Legends YouTube channel, Raid Call of the Arbiter. And if you're brand new to the game, use my link or scan the QR code on the screen right here and get a free starter pack with this cool in-game loot. So hit the link in the description to download Raid, and I'll see you on the battlefield. Now, earlier I said that it was solved, however that might not be entirely accurate. This is a rabbit hole after all, with a huge amount of cut content, strange easter eggs, and a confusing possible narrative that might tie it all together, or might not. Trust me, it only gets more complicated as you dive further in. So let's just start at the beginning, Mount Chiliad itself. It's the tallest mountain in the game of Grand Theft Auto V, and the highest point you can stand on on the map. At its peak, you can find on one of the walls of the cable car station a strange and ominous looking mural, depicting what looks to be the mountain, alongside some electricity or lightning, multiple points of interest marked by X's along the mountainside, as well as three symbols at the bottom of what looks to be a UFO, some sort of egg, and a jetpack. And on the top of the mountain, there sits a glowing object resembling an eye. Before we get to the main symbols, which is what the bulk of this myth and easter egg is dedicated to, let's first dive into the boxes marked with X's. Seemingly, it looks from a glance that these might be points of interest marked on the mountain, and when you look around you can actually find five different symbols on Chiliad. Two of them though just have the eye as they have been weathered over time, but the other three have the eye symbol as well as another one below it. These are what looks to be the mountain again, or possibly some kind of road, but likely just another depiction of Chiliad itself. Then there's the moon along with three lines which come into play later. And lastly there is a cloud, more specifically a rain or storm cloud. So what does all this mean? And why can't we see the other two full symbols? Well, that's because maybe these don't actually have anything to do with the mural boxes, and it may just be a coincidence that there are five of each. Let me explain. At first, many people believed that the jetpack was the main secret and reward for completing this easter egg, which a lot of people initially thought was just to get 100% completion in the game, which is a part of this easter egg but does not reward the jetpack. 
However, according to a theory by Strange Man, shout out to him by the way, he did a great theory on this, he as well as many others believe that these five boxes, as well as the additional symbols found on the mountain and these three other symbols at the bottom of the mural, the UFO, the jetpack, and the alien egg, all represent different components of getting to 100% completion to get this easter egg. But there's also one more very important symbol, the eye at the top, which some consider to actually just be also a UFO, which I don't think is the case considering there is one down here, but still, this seems to be the main reward for completing this easter egg, and 100%, at least at first glance. And it also tells us that it is at the top of the mountain, and you can actually reach this platform there, and you will see text engraved in the wooden deck that says, come back when your story is complete. Even more proof that this is part of the requirements for completing this easter egg, but that's not all. Just like seen in the mural at the peak of Chiliad, you can find this red eye or UFO symbol underneath the deck. And even further cementing this theory, remember the three glyphs found on the mountainside? Well they could all possibly represent the other key elements needed to see this easter egg. The rain cloud symbolizes the stormy weather that is needed to see this phenomenon. The mountain path again shows that it takes place at the top of Chiliad, which at this point is pretty obvious with all the hints they've been giving. But the biggest clue comes from the moon glyph, but remember it also has the three lines. Which may tell us that we need to come back at night, hence the moon, but also at 3 o'clock or 3 a.m. But following these instructions now does nothing for us, even after completing the story mode. Come back when your story is complete. They don't mean just the story mode, but everything. 100% completion. The boxes with the X's could represent the five category requirements for reaching that goal, which can be viewed in the pause menu. Those being the 69 story missions, 42 hobbies and pastimes, 20 strangers and freaks missions, 14 random events, and 16 miscellaneous activities. Completing all of these tasks and following the guidelines of the glyph symbols, you are met with this. A really awesome easter egg by Rockstar, no doubt, and that's it. Case closed, right? Well, no. We've barely scratched the surface. Everything so far seems pretty cut and dry. Not everyone agrees on this interpretation of the mural, but everyone would agree that there are hints to see this easter egg, such as the pretty obvious text on the platform. But once you complete 100% of the game, there are actually two additional UFO encounters. Another one at a hippie camp in Sandy Shores, and another hovering over the military base for Zancudo. And taking another look at both the UFOs near Chiliad and the hippie camp, you might notice something particular about its design. You can make out text reading FIB. FIB? Like the GTA equivalent of the FBI? Alright, this is getting interesting. So it seems these two UFOs are not actually operated by aliens, but are rather government experiments or possibly reverse engineered alien technology, which only makes this myth all the more interesting. Also kind of hilarious that the FIB would advertise themselves on a UFO they made, classic. But it only gets crazier when you look at the UFO at Fort Zancudo. This one is completely different from the others, sporting a much more menacing and quite frankly alien design. But the fact that it's hovering over a military base makes you wonder if this one is even alien tech either, or just some top secret military project, or maybe the real aliens are spying on Fort Zancudo, remaining undetected with their superior technology. However, because of something found in the Criminal Enterprises update, I doubt that theory. Because thanks to the game file gurus who were a great help in making strides in this continued Mount Chiliad mystery and basically everything secret this game has to offer, we get to see a very strange and hidden supply run mission in GTA Online where you steal UFO parts from Fort Zancudo, the same model as the one found flying over the base at 100% completion, meaning either they created that UFO or reverse engineered one themselves. And taking a closer look at the actual UFO, you can see English writing on the bottom of it, further proving this to be the case. Regardless, after you collect the parts, you are tasked with bringing them to good old Omega, who is also a UFO enthusiast and in the base game of GTA 5 has a stranger mission where you have to collect 50 spaceship parts and bring them to him, in order to receive a new alien themed vehicle. And you also get to witness firsthand in a cutscene the power of this alien technology. 
But looking further into this Omega character, he is likely from a hippie camp located in Sandy Shores, where of course the third UFO encounter takes place. And there is a ton to dive into here with this place. First of all, clearly there are alien depictions and writing saying things like beam me up and save us, but also you can find the moon and cloud symbols from Chiliad, and near the camp in the sand you can find the mountain glyph, which also has some additional symbols as well as an arrow and an N suggesting you go north, which leads you right to the camp itself. Going back to the camp, you can also see the same series of letters, which is a reference to a real life radio signal thought to have been broadcast possibly by extraterrestrials, called the WOW signal back in 1977. So it's clear at this point that all three of these UFOs and the locations more specifically that they're found at are crucial to this easter egg. But also, this group at this camp isn't the only ones in the game that believe in aliens. There are two other notable ones that seem to worship them, those being the Epsilon group and the Altruist cult. The Epsilon program is a religious cult found in many of the Grand Theft Auto games and even in Red Dead 2, appearing as a clear parody of the real Church of Scientology, believing in of course aliens and the like, including several stranger missions for Michael in the base game. But none of this really ties into the easter egg as far as I can tell, or at least it's not important to the overall UFO story, and really would just take up a lot more time explaining it all. But the other group, the Altruist Cult, I think is definitely worth diving into here in regards to this mystery, especially since if you go back to the mountain glyph in the sand and simply follow the arrow instead of going north as the end symbol suggests, it will take you right to their camp. They're a group likely inspired by the real life tragic cult Heaven's Gate, which has been categorized as a UFO religion, which I didn't even know was a subcategory of religions, but there you go. They have a long and complicated history, but are most known for their interesting beliefs, as well as a mass gas that was carried out by the group in 1997, leaving 39 followers dead. Interestingly, and quite disturbingly, you can do missions for this group as Trevor, kidnapping people and delivering them to the cult for money, and it seems they use these people as human sacrifices to these alien entities, further proven by the strange writings and symbols found around the camp, including the Red Eye from Mount Chiliad. Eventually, after doing this enough times for the cult, Trevor himself is kidnapped but of course manages to escape while the cultists talk to this alien entity and just kills all of them. But we are still not done with the UFOs, because it seems that with every major update, there's more to be unpacked, and in the Criminal Enterprises update is where things truly get crazy. Rockstar added as a part of a Halloween themed update 26 UFOs to the game, which can be photographed and sent to Omega for rewards, but also you can even get abducted by a select few of these UFOs, which in this update update doesn't do much except suck your character into the air before cutting to white. However, that was until this year on June 13th, 2023, that the San Andreas Mercenary update dropped, which added a new cutscene to these UFO abductions, which likely isn't meant to be played until spooky season, but nevertheless, the game file gurus managed to get in. Now, after you get abducted, you appear in some sort of examination room, before you end up back in the regular game. But if you actually manage to walk around this area, you will notice that the play Place doesn't necessarily look like the inside of a UFO. Not that I've ever been inside one, but the point is, doesn't this more so look like some sort of government facility? In fact, that is what it seems to be, an underground base hidden beneath Fort Zancudo. Could the FIB, possibly the IAA, GTA's version of the CIA, and the government in general be the ones abducting people and taking them here for whatever experiments they're doing? Well, exploring the area further, we can see some strange symbols on the wall, the usual at this point, but also something very interesting, the schematics for a jetpack similar to the one that you can find at Area 69 in GTA San Andreas. So I have a feeling this area is definitely going to be used for something later on in the game. I think maybe some sort of Halloween themed update or maybe even a full blown heist. But before we get to the secrets of the jetpack, let's take a quick look at the second symbol seen at the bottom of the mural, the cracked egg. This symbol has probably the least known about it of the bunch. There are plenty of theories, sure, but not much concrete info, like we have from the other two. But that doesn't mean there's nothing. Taking a look at it, it appears to be a cracked egg, and most people's first assumption was that it was an alien egg, which would make a lot of sense. Tying everything together in this mural as connected to aliens, maybe one being seen at the summit of the mountain, this red eye. We already know the UFOs are connected to aliens and possibly whatever is at the top, and the jetpack. 
but we'll save that for its own section. But it's a good guess to say this could be an alien egg. There are several references to a specific alien species throughout the game, unrelated to the UFOs. First of all, there's the Alien Vinewood movie set, as well as a rare poster which can be found in GTA Online depicting aliens as well. But the biggest reference is an easter egg found in the first mission of the game in North Yankton, where you play as Michael and Trevor in the past on their last bank job with Brad. And on a patch of ice near a bridge can be found a frozen alien, which is an awesome easter egg. It looks quite similar to a xenomorph from the movie Alien, and bears a pretty strong resemblance to the alien costumes from the movie set, as well as the aliens from Michael's weed hallucination missions. Maybe this alien is one of the species who had their UFOs repurposed and reverse engineered by the FIB and Fort Zancudo, which is a theory that's even more likely and supported when we look at another secret supply mission, one that was found well before the Fort Zancudo one, but is still extremely hidden. The only legit way to access it is to have done over 600 supply run missions, and is still only available at a specific time. But if you actually manage to do this without killing off all your brain cells, you just might be able to do this insane mission, where you once again find a UFO, this time a crashed one similar to the ones found above Chiliad and the Hippie Camp, but instead of stealing parts from it, you take an alien egg. Yes, that's right. You have to take the alien egg and bring it back to a bunker while fending off government agents and mercenaries. But that isn't the only place the egg can be found. It is also located in the underground Zancudo facility from the new update, where it can be found in a room of the lab. So there's government UFOs and possible alien UFOs, actual aliens and alien eggs, and a jetpack schematic. All three pieces of the puzzle, right? Well, also besides the jetpack, there are schematics for the Oppressor Mark II, a very infamous GTA Online vehicle introduced in the After Hours update in 2018, with its existence here suggesting that maybe it was also created using futuristic technology, as well as with the jetpack. I mean, it's a hoverbike that shoots missiles after all, and a jetpack is, well, a jetpack. Maybe alien tech had something to do with these. But if you played your fair share of GTA Online, you'll know this one that looks like the original from San Andreas looks nothing like the one that can be found in the game, the Thruster, introduced in the Doomsday Heist. <laughs> But before we get to all of that, let's take a little bit of a step back. Because of the mythical status of the jetpack, as well as its appearance in San Andreas, many believe that the reward for solving the Mount Chiliad mystery and easter egg would be the jetpack in single player. But when all the clues and theories we discussed so far led to dead ends, many thought it would be introduced with the new single player DLC which was planned for the game, before it ended up being cut and had some of its content repurposed for GTA Online. Remember that, because it will be important a bit later. Some of the files that were found even indicated that it might have featured zombies as well as aliens. Hmm, could this be where the original Mount Chiliad mystery was leading, this future DLC that was cancelled? Maybe. Probably, honestly. But hold on, we're not done yet. Before the thruster was added in the Doomsday update, players were confused, because, well, the other two main symbols were in the game. The UFOs were, as we discussed, part of the 100% completion easter egg, and while the alien egg wouldn't officially be added to the game for quite some time, it was actually data mined pretty early on in the mystery's lifespan, leaving only the mythical jetpack, which is why some believed it to be the final reward. There was no model like the others had in the files, but it was mentioned in lines of code, leading some to think that it still did exist out there, somewhere. Which brings me to another layer of this mystery, another theory for what these symbols mean, again popularized by Strange Man, that these symbols don't necessarily directly represent what they show, that they don't want us to actually find a UFO, an alien egg, and a jetpack, but rather that these three symbols represent the three protagonists of the game. Although I don't think I agree with this theory. Regardless, it's stated that Michael is represented by the UFO, or the man inside of it, due to him alienating himself from his family and friends, due to his betrayals and life of crime, although this seems like a bit of a stretch to me. The egg, the symbol in the middle, represents Franklin, because he is definitely the main character of this game, the one who is changed the most by the two other protagonists and makes the final decision in the last mission, but especially because he's the only one who can do the final quest in the game after 100% completion. And don't worry, we'll get to that. But the symbol of the cracked egg could represent him coming out of his shell into his new life as a professional criminal 
terminal, learning from his two mentors, Michael and Trevor, which is where the lines in the mountain come in. As this theory posits that they actually mean something, they are what connects these three characters. Now I'm going to have to get into a bit of story spoilers here, so skip past this part if you haven't played the game yet or don't care about being spoiled. Anyway, if this theory is true, Michael and Trevor being connected before meeting Franklin makes sense, due to their past as seen in the first mission. Also it shows Franklin meeting Michael first, then Trevor as that happens in the game as well, and finally the lines of both Trevor and Michael end before reaching the top, and only Franklin's egg makes it, which of course symbolizes two of the game's endings, where you can either kill Michael or Trevor as Franklin. But that's where this theory kind of breaks for me. Like I get it, they both can die in their own respective endings, but you can't can't kill both, and if you do the Death Wish ending, everyone lives, which is actually the canon ending. Plus, I don't really understand Trevor being represented by the jetpack. I guess because he's a pilot, but that's a bit of a stretch in my opinion. Still, I think it's a theory worth mentioning. But back to the actual jetpack, the Thruster, which was first introduced into GTA Online in the Doomsday Heist content update in 2017. It is a very different one compared to the one seen in the Zancudo schematics and in San Andreas, but it's still a jetpack, so I guess all the symbols have been found in the game. So has the case been solved yet? Well, maybe. Because that wasn't the only thing that this update introduced. The Doomsday Heist is one of the biggest updates the game has ever seen, adding many new vehicles, outfits, weapons, but most importantly to this mystery, the heist itself, which many favor as the best explanation for this mystery that we have, and for the most part I tend to agree. That's because the heist is entirely based around a secret base hidden within Mount Chiliad, used by the tech billionaire Avon Hertz, again, spoiler alert for this GTA Online heist, but he uses this secret ex-government facility as his base, and at first he work for him, breaking into Noose Headquarters, the GTA equivalent of Homeland Security and SWAT, and even a secret IAA facility underneath the Satellite Relay Station, which is a whole other can of worms because it seems the FIB and the IAA are researching UFOs and aliens here because in the next gen version, scientists and FIB agents will spawn at this location, along with satellites now glowing at night, but regardless it's not too important, and again just reinforces the government connection with the UFOs. What is important though is that in the third act, you have to stop Avon Hertz who uses this abandoned nuclear missile base hidden inside of Mount Chiliad and plans to start a nuclear war using his AI Clifford. But in the finale, you stop and destroy his AI and even fight him using the thruster. So it would seem that the Doomsday Heist was what the mural was alluding to, right? You have a secret base with tunnels connecting inside of Mount Chiliad, hence the lines on the mural, and you finally have the jetpack added to the game in the same update and even used in the heist. But what about the UFO and the alien egg? Well, they do appear in the game, but in very different and separate easter eggs for the most part, so maybe this really isn't the end of all this? But you could say they are all just distinct easter eggs foreshadowed, that all have some kind of connection to Mount Chiliad, which is almost true, but the alien egg? It doesn't really have anything to do with this place, so could that really be the answer? Well, in the facility during the heist finale, there can be found four more strange murals on the wall. Although some of it is hard to understand, it's at least clear from these that this government facility was at one point used to study aliens and UFOs, which lines up with everything we've talked about so far, and I guess does in a way tie in the alien egg if you want to look at it that way, meaning for some this really is the final answer. But there's something else found on these murals that is of note this one specifically, a number, that might not mean anything unless you know about one big secret that I've yet to discuss so far in the video. The number is 27, and along with the other hints on this mural can only mean one thing, Bigfoot. That's right. And no, this isn't some tinfoil hat theory. This is the real deal, and I'll explain why. Because to be honest, I've been tackling most of the events of this mystery out of order in order to focus on each subsection individually in a way that I felt would present all of this in an interesting and fun way to see it all unravel. So yeah, we're not done. We still haven't even gotten to the best part. Playable Bigfoot. Bro, what the f is this? It wouldn't be a GTA myth if it didn't somehow involve Bigfoot, the most notorious myth in the history of these games. And you know Rockstar couldn't leave that out of this whole thing. So once again, we need to go back in the timeline of GTA 5, back when people were still investigating the world of single player with the next gen editions of the game, released on Xbox One and PS4 back in November of 2014. 
I mentioned earlier that this updated version included the FIB agents and scientists found at the satellite relay station, but there were a few other differences in this version. Namely, 27 of these peyote plant collectibles which were found in the game. All of which would turn you into a different animal, including a cat, boar, crow, and even a dolphin. But the most important thing here was that number, 27, like we saw in the Mount Chiliad facility. But just a cool easter egg, right? Nothing too crazy. Well, much later on, a golden peyote plant was actually found, but it took a while due to how hidden it was. In fact, its location had to be data mined, but even still, nobody could find it. That was until someone found out that you had to be at that location on a Tuesday in game, as well as between the hours of 5.30 and 8am with foggy weather, and having completed the game to 100%, as well as having completed the last one side quest as friends. Franklin, at which point you could then find the golden plant and consume it, and then turn into Bigfoot. And you can free roam for a while, just like with the other animal plants, and he even has his own attack moves and a growl function. However, it doesn't end there. But before we continue on with the golden peyote plant easter egg, I have to address the last one. No, literally, that's what the mission is called. The final stranger mission available in the game for Franklin after getting 100% completion. You see, in the mission you encounter a strange man who claims he's been hunting a Sasquatch for 9 years, the same length of time between the releases of San Andreas and GTA 5, a clever nod by Rockstar to GTA's most infamous myth. And honestly, I couldn't think of a better send-off for this game, but when you find Bigfoot, it's actually revealed to just be a guy in a costume, who you can kill or just let go. Again, alluding to the fact that the Bigfoot myth from San Andreas wasn't real the entire time. But what's more interesting is the Hunter, who is in fact the same hunter from Red Dead Redemption's Undead Nightmare DLC, who also tasked John Marston with hunting down and killing a Sasquatch, which in that universe they're actually real but not bloodthirsty creatures or anything and have almost been wiped out by humans. But this whole thing really makes everything just more confusing, as possibly these universes could be one and the same, although that isn't really likely, and the man as well as the Bigfoot are just fun easter eggs, right? But back to the peyote plant mystery, there are more than just one golden plant. In fact, there are seven that were later found in various locations using the same methods, but instead of on Tuesdays, they were all spawned on a different day of the week, which was hinted by Rockstar themselves going into the game's code for data miners and leaving the line, he was wrong to start his hunt on a Tuesday. Quickly players figured out they were all from days of the week and found them, but they just turned you into Bigfoot in the same way, until someone figured out that if you do them all in order from Sunday until Saturday, on the last day you can actually find the Saturday Squatch Hunter from Red Dead and the last one, dead, likely killed by the player. And that still was not the end. If you use the growl function I briefly mentioned earlier, you can hear a howl in response in the distance. Following this will lead you quite a ways, following a trail of corpses, before reaching the Thompson Scrapyard, where the player will be attacked by a werewolf known as the Beast. Very crazy stuff, but the boss fight itself, eh. Kind of boring. But after you defeat the beast, you simply wake up as normal. So what does any of this have to do with the overall mystery? To be quite frank, I have no idea. This mural from the Doomsday Heist clearly references this easter egg, maybe somehow the government was also involved with this plant, but peyote itself is simply a hallucinogen, and everything that happens during this may be just that, a hallucination. Which means this could simply be something completely unrelated. Which leads me to my final conclusion. So then, taking all of that into consideration, the dead ends, the mysterious easter eggs, cults, aliens, UFOs, Bigfoot, werewolves, government conspiracies, the FIB, the IAA, nukes, jetpacks, alien eggs, Mount Chiliad, it's, it's all, it's all connected, it, it has to be it, or is it? Yeah, so here is the point in the video where I tell you this thing is in fact not solved and may never be, because no one knows what this myth even is anymore. It's now such a rabbit hole that it cannot even be truly defined. And what I mean by that is where the Mount Chiliad and mural mystery connects or doesn't with other various myths and easter eggs like the UFO phenomenon, the alien egg, this whole Bigfoot thing, and everything else in the game really. Everyone is trying to piece together a grand narrative and have everything fit into place, and have it all make sense when really to be honest, it can't. Because in my opinion, the Mount Chiliad mystery doesn't really exist. 
at least in the way it's talked about today. At one point, sure, the mural easter eggs, maybe it was all meant to be connected to something. Possibly in that single player DLC we talked about, but that never really happened. And it wasn't until 2017, four years after launch, that we got the Doomsday Heist. So was that what this all really was about? Besides the mural, there wasn't much foreshadowing of that at all, compared to the extensive clues they gave for the UFO 100% completion easter egg. No, I think these are all just a series of loosely connected, fun easter Easter eggs put into the game by Rockstar for just that. Good old fun. Seeing how people try to piece together a narrative and an easter egg that really just isn't there. Clearly they know what we're up to, leaving clues in the game's code for data miners, referencing myths not just in the base game but later on in GTA Online updates, especially the Doomsday Heist, which most likely they made based around the Mount Chiliad myth rather than planning it out from the beginning. Taking player interpretations of what it was and molding it into that heist for a grand finale of the mystery. However, even after that, they did still keep it going. I mean, they know what they're doing. The alien egg, the jetpack schematic, all of that in the newest update, it's still not over. They continuously add stuff in each major update, so maybe it will lead to some big reveal down the line. Maybe I'm wrong about all this, but as of now, it seems more like something that Rockstar adopted thanks to the myth hunting community, wanting to know Mount Chiliad's secrets for so long. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Honestly, this is some really cool stuff stuff, and I'm glad Rockstar is still as invested in it as the myth hunting community is, even 10 years after the game's launch. So long story short, the Mount Chiliad mystery really was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> No, but seriously, the Mount Chiliad mystery is just a love letter to all the myth-hunting GTA fans out there, to the people who stayed up late at night hunting for Bigfoot and UFOs in San Andreas, for those people that keep the myth going, adding small easter eggs when they can to keep the myth alive. And there's something really awesome about that, never letting the mystery end. But at the same time, it almost feels like until we get GTA 6 that this myth will really never end. And maybe it won't, with people still finding what they think are clues and easter eggs long after this game is done. And you know what? That's alright with me.